In this video, we'll see a couple examples of how to solve radical equations by squaring both sides once. We'll see more complicated examples where we have to square multiple times in another video. So let's look at this example. We want to solve the equation the square root of x minus 1 equals x minus 7. And of course, what we don't like about that equation is the square root. And so the solution method is to square both sides and get rid of the square root. So our first step is going to be to square both sides and that will eliminate the square root, and we'll be down to a more conventional equation. On the left-hand side, when we square a square root, the square root goes away. We just get x minus 1. And on the right-hand side, when we square x minus 7, now that might require us to do a little bit of algebra going off on the side and actually multiplying out x minus 7 times x minus 7. I recommend you practice that if you're not sure exactly how to do that, but I'll save you the trouble. It works out to be x squared minus 14x plus 49. And we can see that this is going to be a quadratic equation, so as usual we're going to move everything over to one side, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides and add 1 to both sides, so I get x squared minus 15x plus 50. We could use the quadratic formula, but this does factor. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to be positive 50 and add together to be negative 15, doesn't take too long to figure out that the two numbers I need are minus 5 and minus 10. That means I get two solutions, x equals 5 and x equals 10. But something happened when we squared both sides of this equation. We went from an equation that had a square root in it to an equation that didn't have a square root in it anymore. And so what we lost is the fact that this x minus 1, this number inside the square root, was not allowed to be negative. And so what we want to do is make sure that both of these numbers really are solutions to our original equation. They're certainly solutions to this equation, but they may not both be solutions to the original equation. So for, especially for equations involving square roots, we really need to check our answer. Sometimes checking your answer is something that you do if you feel like it or if you're not sure, but with radical equations you have to check your answer because sometimes the answers you get are not actually solutions to the original equation. So let's check. So first we'll check x equals 5. And when we check x equals 5, we get the square root of 5 minus 1. And we want to know, does that equal 5 minus 7? 5 minus 1 is 4, but 5 minus 7 is negative 2. But the square root of 4 is positive 2. So that is not a solution. x equals 5 is not a solution to our equation. Let's check x equals positive 10. This time we get 10 minus 1 under the square root, and we want to know, does that equal 10 minus 7? Well, 10 minus 1 is 9, and 10 minus 7 is 3, and the square root of 9 really is 3, so that checks. And so x equals 10 is a solution, but x equals 5 is not. Let's do another example. This time we have the square root of 10 minus x plus 4 equals x. Be careful here, notice that the square root symbol ends here, so the plus 4 is not inside the square root, only the 10 minus x is. And if we have our first step here be to square both sides, something bad is going to happen, because if we square the square root of 10 minus x plus 4, remember that what that means is to multiply that by itself. Square root of 10 minus x plus 4 times the square root of 10 minus x plus 4, and that would need to be foiled out. We'd have to multiply together all of the different pairs of terms, and that's just going to be a big ugly mess. And what's worse, it's not actually going to get rid of the square root. We're still going to have square roots left over if we try to do that. So this is not the approach. We don't want to just jump in and try to square both sides right off the bat. Instead, what we need to do is try to make this look like the previous example. And the way to do that is to start off by subtracting 4 from both sides. In other words, get the square root term by itself. So now that we've subtracted 4 from both sides, and the square root of 10 minus x is all by itself, now we can square both sides. And we won't end up with a crazy mess. Now what we'll do is just get rid of the square root when we do this. On the left-hand side, squaring the square root just makes it go away. And on the right-hand side, now that's where the foiling comes in. So multiplying out x minus 4 times x minus 4. Do that on your own if you need to, practice, but that works out to be x squared minus 8x plus 16. And now we've got a standard quadratic equation to solve. So we end up with 
x squared, we're going to add x to both sides, so we get minus 7x. Subtract 10 from both sides, we get plus 6. And that gives us, when we factor this, x minus 1 times x minus 6. And that gives us two solutions, x equals 1 and x equals 6. And just like in the previous example, we have to check these answers. I'll leave that to you as a practice problem, but when we check, x equals 1 doesn't work, but x equals 6 does. So go ahead and check that on your own, but once again, just like the previous example, we've only got one solution, even though it looked like we might have two.